Hello Scorpio, welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. So your reading today is going kind of off the usual track a bit, but we'll, we'll kind of get there. So the first thing is that the cards are really, even more than usual, speaking primarily with their images rather than uh, with any text or sort of traditional meaning of the cards. So that's the first thing. So we have this card, so we don't care about it being the lonesome gardener. What we care about is this spider and seeing the spider. Now, this actually is, this reading is definitely related to me and I think meant also for me. Um, the day before yesterday, I saw a spider in my kitchen uh, in a place where I've never seen one before. It was sort of right in front of my face. Um, I have no idea where the spider came from. There's no, right, there's no webs in the immediate vicinity. Um, <clears throat> he or she must have come from kind of a great distance or else you know, possibly having just appeared there. in order for me to witness, I, I believe, or at least in part, I mean, the spider may of course have had his or her own agenda, but I think that, that he or she was there as a message to me as well. And through this reading, a message for you as well. So I don't know if anyone who's come to this reading, I was thinking as I was first shuffling your cards that these readings that I do are not so much about, you know, someone who has a Scorpio sun or Scorpio rising, but the Scorpio energy that exists in the, in the world and the cosmos that it's just that archetype, that energy that wants to speak here. So this reading in particular, and maybe, maybe even going forward from here, perhaps, and maybe it always has been this way. Um, you may come here and have no significant placement, Scorpio placement but that the Scorpio energy is speaking to you. So the other card that came out and it came out, um, so I laid out, right, I chose this card. I laid out all the other cards from the decks. I turned them over. Um, I was getting a sense of the reading and then my attention was drawn. First to, to this field tarot deck. And the card that wanted to come out there was the Wheel of Fortune. So the wheel spinning. And there is this, I mean, there is a kind of emphasis a little bit on animals here in this reading. So even if perhaps it's not a spider, although I think that spiders are significant, that other beings animals or perhaps plants, trees are messengers for you at this time, right? Because we do have, I mean, if we, if we think about the lonesome gardener, all right, the garden um, that all of the plants and trees that may be in the garden and other insects perhaps too. And this card has cats. So that something, right, something is changing 
and animals may be uh, messengers, uh, they may be part of synchronicities for you. So we have this vampire card which has come out a number of times in recent weeks or months. But now not so much right vampire hunger, but just this uh, kind of almost revelatory um, or, or breakout energy, right? I sort of, you know, feel like he's having a primal scream <laughs> here. And below him is this beautiful energy. And I feel like this is what is attempting to come through. And again, not necessarily chaos, but this flowing, moving energy. And here again, uh, at the bottom with this Mithras energy, right, it's like he's rising out of the ground. Freeing himself. Or maybe even actually, now that I look at him again, it's as if he were, as if he had been encased in something, as if he were a living statue. And he's now breaking out of that energy. Right, like all of that um, stone that had kept him still is right breaking off of his body and his right his fleshy animal self is free. So then we have this Sphinx card, and it says gratification, but she looks. Um, you know, not just gratified, but knowing. Right? There's a, a new understanding that's coming through. A new understanding of the cosmos of space and time and reality. And again, here with the cat. And there is also, right, this, um, right, this kind of master villain energy here, right? Dr. Evil. Um, the Bond villains. Um, so, uh, but with a wink, with humor. Um, stepping out of the normal confines. It's that kind of a uh, little bit of devil energy, the um, adversary to the status quo. Uh, it's subversive. And I certainly associate the word subversive with Scorpio. And then more animals, Cerberus. And they look, you know, they just look eager. You know, it seems to me that, that, that maybe there's an aspect of you that has been stuck on guard, right? This, this, just say guardian and Cerberus right, guards the door to the underworld. But that this aspect of you is ready to stop that, to see and understand that this hypervigilance, this guardianship is no longer necessary. Right? Like something has come along and said, hey, you wanna go for a walk? Yeah, let's go. 
ride in the car? Right? Stick your three heads out the window. Feel that rush of air. This, hey, there's change, there's change happening, Scorpio. Now here at this, in this pile at the bottom of this deck, we have this tree of life. And again, I'm, right, I'm seeing this knot. And often this comes out, you know, as a, right, as a partnership energy, as a, you know, a lovely intertwining. But here, today, it is a knot. There's some sort of knot that's wanting to be untied to release. And I want to say that, you know, often we talk about like cord cutting and string cutting and I have issues with that as an image. Uh, I have several issues. One, that there's a, right, there's a, you know, even if, if thought of as, as being done really gently, right, like with a pair of scissors rather than a giant sword. That there's something I don't know, hard, harsh, I don't know what the word I want is about that, but also that if you do that, the, right, the, the bits of cord are still there. And you don't, you don't have the whole line. So it, if we think of this, not as a cord between two people, but as a knot in the, um, in the cord that you're weaving with, right? That your life is being woven with. Um, you know, if you're if you're a knitter or a weaver, uh, and you use yarn, you may sometimes encounter a knot in the skein, right? Because the the company that that winds up the skein runs out of you know the single long length, and then needs to start a new long length, and so they make a little knot. And so maybe there's been a knot that was so sort of big and unruly that it, that it didn't want to enter the weaving, right? That if you wove with it, it would make this big lump. But now that knot is being untied. And right through this giveaway. through this giveaway. Something, you are releasing something. And, and I almost want to say that this is not like something specific, as in, you know, some grudge that you're holding or um, some, you know, past nasty incident in your life or some belief, it's almost, it's like an energetic knot that isn't specific. It's kind of, you know, it's all those things. Um, it may even have been a knot that was sort of almost deliberate, that your wider self perhaps was using the knot to keep you from rushing too far too fast. Or maybe to keep you from rushing off in a direction that, that wasn't appropriate. But now we have the rainbow, right? This swift moving energy. Now that this knot is being released, that this ossification 
is being cracked off. This faster moving energy can enter your life. And then we have this sweat lodge energy and, and underneath it, it's stuck together, was the ghost dance. So if you've been stuck inside something, doing the ghost dance, you're going to come out now. And instead of the ghost dance, you're going to do the sun dance. This dance of light and vision and clarity. Right. They're also right. They're kind of this. Right. There's an aspect they both have. Right. This headdress, and they could be the same person. In right in this fog. Right. They even have a a moon together. But it's in right here. We're fogged up, and here the fog is clearing. Now, some of this may have to do with perspective. Because we have this five of water, which is very much right about um, both perspective, right? Are you seeing the starving polar bear or right, the polar bear that's doing well? But also being able to hold these two energies. to accept that they both exist and that it may not be your job necessarily to solve this kind of thing everywhere, that you can't hold it for all people, or rather that you, that you're capable of, of accepting. that this is true and that it may always be true. You know, I think spiritual um, guidance, right? They talk about the great awakening and how everything is going to be beautiful and lovely and humankind is heading into a golden age. And, you know, maybe this is true. Maybe that for even the majority of people on the earth at some point in the next hundred years or even sooner, perhaps, who can say? Um, the, you know, the timelines will shift into really prosperous places, but probably not for everybody, not for all 8 billion souls. And to accept that this is true. And I think that you are able to do that. Um, at the bottom of this deck, we have the witch of water. Right, you, Scorpio. And next to that is this Ten of Earth. And this relates a little bit to the Libra and Capricorn readings that I just did that talked about a kind of psychedelic journey, trip, life. And um, that isn't about necessarily taking substances, that it's about how your life changes, how right perspective changes things, how you can shift who you are, that that is a choice for you. How you move through the world is, can be a choice. Why we all have predispositions. We all have, right, these energies of our natal chart. Or if you're not into astrology, right, of your, you know, family line, perhaps. But that this is in no way, right, this is not, in fact, set in stone.
that it is only a beginning. And so we have this priestess, and I see her, right, with, um, with this, um, what looks like a drum beater, and that she is beating the drum of the moon. That this is the call, Scorpio, to, um, to untie that knot, to break out of, right, this stone self that perhaps you've had in how you've moved through the world. Um, she's beating the drum of mystery, of feeling, of emotion, of energy. And I sort of want to say that she is, right, that this drum beating is A, making the roses grow, and B, creating this line of light. So there are different ways that you might be receiving this call, right? It might be sound, it might be sight, it might be scent, right? You might be called by your um, sensual senses through the roses. You might be called through um, a real feeling thing with the moon. You might be called through music through dance, through movement. Um, messages may come through different kinds of channels. And with this messenger of water, um, the animals are kind of repeated, right? The seal and this sort of semi-animal messenger with her webbed hands becoming uh, becoming really acclimatized to this new reality that you're going to walk through. Right, growing those webs between your fingers, metaphorically speaking. And then we got this this rebirth card, but and and yes, that's sort of relevant. And this is the death card in this deck. Uh, the witch's wisdom tarot runs backwards, so nine is thirteen. Going the other way, it starts with the world as card one. So this is Scorpio's card. But mostly what I was drawn to in this card is that crow headdress. And it's partly that, that after I was looking at these cards, I kept staring at it. And then when I looked for a clarifying deck to find out why I was staring at it, what I got was the crow deck with this card. And I don't write warning again, Right? It's this call that's coming through. And once more through the animals. Through, I want to say non-human means. So if you normally, you know, maybe you normally get messages through poems or through songs or in this way. I think this message actually, although I mentioned it, um, with the priestess, I think this, that whatever this is, this call that's coming through, um, or perhaps not, maybe it's the information, the download, the, I think these things are all intertwined, which is why I'm having trouble sort of creating a definition, but that it will come through a non-human channel. So not something you read or see. 
but something that you experience in nature or even just, you know, out on the street if you live in the city. There could be crows or other birds or rats or um, trees or plants. Some way that this information is going to come through. And then I, I actually asked for more cards. Or, or they kind of, not so much that I asked, but that they, right, that, that it really presented itself. And I got the sea serpent, um, which is, of course, a magical being, um, has the uh, element of spirit in this wild unknown animal deck. Um, is also cycles, the, the Ouroboros, um, is related to the sacral chakra. And does always look like conception to me, yeah. With the sperm. And I, actually, <laughs> I had kind of a, I was thinking of it as a very primal day of images, but it could be seen as a scorpionic day of images um, the day before yesterday as well, the day of the spider. So I went out to the store and when I was coming back, uh, I passed the, another store where there were two dogs waiting for their person to come out. And one dog mounted the other. And then later when I went to the park, there were two squirrels mating. And I was watching the squirrels, but there was also one of the park cats watching the squirrels intently. And when the squirrels separated and one of them went off, he took a flying leap at the remaining squirrel, but the distance was too great and he missed. So the squirrel got away, um, but it was very, it was this intense moment. And I've been thinking about it ever since. Right, this, all of these kind of primal and I would say scorpionic images. So perhaps through this, right, that you're going to receive messages in this way. And the other card that came out was the spider. And then finally, here we have this balance card where, right, there's this person kind of communing with all of these animals and trees. And, and actually, you know, there's a little child here. And I might want to include very small children in this non-human grouping. It's possible, right? Babies, toddlers, right? Maybe up to age three or four before kind of the, the social order has impinged on them. Um, when they themselves are still very primal, ruled, you know, not by their thoughts, but by their feelings, emotions, instincts, hungers. So then we have this page of wands. And here, you know, right, like that her head is all lit up. And she's, she's kind of unfocused, right? Her eyes are, they almost look as if they're looking at different things. There's an unfocused quality. And the bottom of this deck is the Ace of Wands. And in this deck, she's kind of, it's as if she's coming from the Ten of Wands, right? She's sort of haggard. She's been through the Nine, right? Gotten all the way to the Nine. She's dropped her load in the Ten. And now she's ready to begin and there's this lock. That I think you'll have the key to because the other card that's out here is the Sun. And this Queen of Cups, and actually the King of Pentacles. 
So she's normally Cancer, but I'm seeing her as you. I mean, and she is kind of scorpionic here in her dark garden. And then the King of Pentacles is Taurus across the way from you. Oh, and then we have Judgment, too. And the world. So, she, right, it's like she's, right, your head is all lit up by this sun, by this clarity. By this knowing that has, right, happened in, in your life, this exit from the ghost dance. And then the wheel repeats, and here specifically with uh, this three fates image with their ball of yarn that they've unknotted. You know, Clotho, she spins the yarn, Lachesis determines its length, and then Atropos cuts it. And so you, I think you have, um, you are our participant here. You're not just at the mercy of fate. You are a participant. But this knot that has been in your thread that has maybe prevented the next section of the weaving to be done is now being unknotted through a joint effort of you, your wider self, source, the energies, And then that brings us to these three, these next three cards. So this very balanced six of pentacles, at ease, very much in her power, individual, in her red dress. If you've been for me, with me for a while, you know that uh, figures in a red dress for me are all about um, passion. Uh, moving forward in a heart-based way, honoring your desires. And then this Three of Cups, celebratory, um, magical. And again, we have some animals showing up. There's a cat and a bunny and there's trees. And this kind of mad hatter um, outside the normal confines, wonderland through the looking glass way. And I want to say that the readings recently are calling for this step through the looking glass and then to just stay there. <laughs> You're not going back. This is not a temporary situation. And then we have the Knight of Cups. Just heart open. Um, vulnerable, right? The, the willingness to be vulnerable, the willingness to be wholehearted. Um, if you know any of Brene Brown's work, she talks about that wholehearted as her word for people. Uh, who can meet challenges and difficulties in their life in an open and vulnerable way. Advice, Scorpio. <laughs> well, first we have the Ace of Swords. So take it, right? When when this starts to happen, when this, you know, I sort of see this sword as having dropped from the heavens and landed quivering in front of you in the ground. Take it. Grab the sword. Take it. Take the sword. The bottom of this deck and then the next card under the Ace of Swords are the Two and Three of Wands. So progress. 
um, look, right? Keep your eyes open. And as new wands arrive, you're going to integrate them. And if you find yourself sort of still in this place, or maybe, you know, something really challenging happens for you at some later point, and you find yourself here, um, I'm actually sort of having a thing that, that, I'm, that I'm challenged by, um, that I am... working to release, to let go, to not get up into my head about it. It is a thing, a kind of thing that is triggering for me. Um, so this may happen to you again, right? That, that you run into some sort of obstacle that triggers this for you. Um, at the bottom of this deck, after I pulled these two cards, uh, the hanged man was there. Right? So this was associated with water traditionally. So this um, alternative viewpoint. And also, right, again, animal, this is a bat who A, is nocturnal, um, B, hunts using this alternative method of echolocation, right, is a flying mammal. So differences, different ways of seeing. And that for me is symbolized today by this Princess of Cups, drinking your own cup. Drinking the cup of your heart, drinking the cup of wider self, the cup of source, the cup of mystery and mysticism. By right? drinking the potion that actually wakes you up, right? Rather than being a potion that puts you to sleep, it's a, it's a potion that lets you see, that wakes you up, right? That this this cross into Wonderland is a cross out of the dream and into the reality. And it makes me also, it makes, that makes me think of um, Douglas Adams' book, So Long and Thanks for All the Fish, the fourth book in the Hitchhiker's Trilogy. And in that book, there's a character who has built an asylum for the world. And it's a house that's built inside out. So he's put the world into an asylum and he lives outside the asylum. So you are leaving the asylum when you drink this. Right, and that brings us again here not to, right, you forget that it's temptation, but to this immersion Right, there you are, within consciousness, within your wider self, within source, right? Your, your human self rides in this wave. So allowing yourself to ride in the wave. Scorpio, to be immersed in the wave. Um, I'm going to end with um, two poems. Well, actually, they're not poems. It, it is from my year of Rilke. But, um, they're from two letters that he wrote, one to a friend. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to say that at the bottom of this crow deck was this distraction card. And I almost feel like Right? Like, 
right? Like this is the same crow. And then again, not about distraction, right? That this is you listening. to that. Um, and below that, right, releasing this resistance that you've been running with and gaining freedom as uh, the anomaly, as the anomaly. So the first thing is a, a letter to a, a friend of his. I can still think, I, I'm sorry, I can still only think of God as the one who allows everything, the one who is not caught up in the whole inexhaustible drama. So that's the thing, if you've got drama, let it go. And then in one of his letters to a young poet, if we imagine our being as a room of any size, it seems that most of us know only a single corner of that room a spot by the window, a narrow strip on which we keep walking back and forth. That gives a kind of security. But isn't insecurity with all its dangers so much more human? We are not prisoners of that room. Scorpio. Oh, so good. I hope you take this and run with it. And then maybe that you come back and tell us about it. I wish you the very, very best, Scorpio. And I'll see you next time. So long.